Good morning. Welcome to Resurrection Bay Baptist Church. Those of you who are here and those of you who are at home, let's all stand and let's sing. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him through the day. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him through the day. I'm going to praise him in the evening. When the blue skies turn to gray. I'm going to praise him every morning. When all around me I see. Let's sing, let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, if we faint not, for in due season we shall reap. 
If we faint not, if we faint not, for in due season we shall reap. All right, let's sing, Come Boldly Unto the Throne of Grace. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace, find grace. Next one, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by my name. Thou art mine, and when passes through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow. When thou passest through. Sound man got me good. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. Gosh. The bomb of Gilead, the rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. He is the great I am, the God of Abraham. Jehovah Shammah, the God of peace I am, the God of Israel, the everlasting one. He is Jehovah, the God that Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth me. He's your provider, Jehovah Jireh, God of salvation, God of Messiah, the Son he sent to you. He testified of him. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. He is Jehovah, the God that Amen. Any of you who are out there looking for an occupation who can make someone look silly, you should talk to Dr. Archibald back there on the soundboard. <laughs> thank you for participating in the songs this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, that we're able to gather around your word, Lord, although not with everyone, but we know everyone in spirit is right here with us this morning, and I thank you for that. I thank you for being a God who can be with us here and both in our homes at the same time. That means you're living, and Lord, I'm thankful you're not dead today. That gives me hope of eternal life, and I thank you for that. Now, God, I ask you to bless Brother Werner, Lord, as he comes to preach your word this morning and be with our pastor in the next hour. Lord, give him words and wisdom to preach boldly, and Lord, I ask you to cure this country of this disease that's going around like I know you only can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. Uh, Acts chapter 17, if you'll go there with me. Acts chapter 17. Thank you for uh, joining with us online today. And um, thank you for everybody that's here. 
<laughs> We're glad you're with us today online. And uh, let me encourage you, if you are home right now, you don't have a Bible with you, grab a Bible, actually get up, get a Bible, get a pen, get, a, get something to write on a piece of paper. I'm going to challenge you this morning as we go through this message. Um, and, and the question today that we're going to look at, <clears throat> what has captured your mind? What's captured your mind? You see, our minds will be captured by many things. And you know, I purposely have been using the slide with the COVID virus in the background because as you go through uh, this life, if you spend time at the grocery store, maybe at the post office, you're social distancing, right? Social distancing, is that a new term? Uh, and you talk with people, a lot of people are overwhelmed right now. They're without hope. Uh, they're discouraged because of the economic situation, the work situation, the health situation. I mean, <clears throat> everyone seems to be affected by this, and, and it doesn't have an impact on our mind. And the question is, what has captured your mind? And, and as we look at God's Word today in Acts chapter 17, we're going to go back to where Paul goes into the city of Athens, and as he looks around and he sees all these idols that are there, that are being worshipped and drawn attention to. He finds this one idol and to an unknown God and to a group of people that day. He's going to present the gospel of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then today we're going to look at one verse, uh, verse 34, that deals with the tail end of the response of those that were there that day that heard about this Jesus and his resurrection. So let's take a look at the scriptures today. I'm going to start in Acts chapter 17, and I'm just going to go down to uh, verse 16. It says, now when Paul waited for them at Athens, Athens, so Paul is in Athens. He's waiting for Silas and Timotheus, Timothy. His spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. What's your, what stirs your spirit? Is it the news of the day? Is it the economic situation? Is it this whole deal about the COVID virus? You want to get some people wound up. Just mention the COVID virus and how all these mandates and how we're stuck indoors. That, that'll get you going. But what is it that stirs you? Paul was stirred. Verse 17 says, therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and some, some said, what will this babbler say? And others, some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he, is, he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him up unto the Areopagus. That's that court that stands up on Mars Hill in Athens, saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. He told them about Jesus and the resurrection. For them, it was something new, something strange. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Verse 21, for all the Athenians and the strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found to an found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I you, I unto you. And then if you'll jump down to verse 32, as, as Paul preaches the gospel and this resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he goes all the, for the, for those that were there that day, he's going to build a case, but I want you to see the response. Let's go down to verse uh, 32. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, look at the response. There's three responses here. Some mocked. Others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. And today we're going to look at verse 34. So Paul departed from among them, but verse 34 says this. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among which was Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and other with them. So let's go to the Lord as we look at this thought today of what captures your mind? Father, thank you for this time as we gather in the name of Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that your spirit would just work through your word and the hearts of minds of all those who hear your truth today, who hear you speak to them through your truth and by your spirit, and who will hear your truth later as they watch 
maybe the recording of this. And Lord, I pray that this would be a profitable time. And Lord, that your will would be done as your word goes out. May the name of Jesus be lifted up. May your will be done. May you stir our hearts and draw them to you. And may your, your truth capture our mind and heart today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Verse 34 tells us this. How be it certain men clave unto him and believed among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris and others with them. I like the way this chapter ends because <clears throat> while, while we see that there are some that, that harden their hearts to the message that Paul preached that day, we find others, their hearts were melted. They heard the truth. That truth captured their mind and it would forever change their belief who this Jesus was through his resurrection. You see, when God desires to do something in us, it begins with first capturing our mind. Because it always comes down to a heart issue, but it begins in the mind. I mean, if you're honest, most of the decisions that we make, the things that we struggle with as we go through our daily schedules, our routines, as we're faced with circumstances of life, decisions that we have to make of what we're going to do that day, maybe where we're going to be or where we're going to go, they all take place in the mind. And what has captured your mind will affect the way that you live out this life. And Paul's, Paul encourages me through his word today that the things we think about will affect the decisions we make. The, it'll affect every aspect of us. You know the uh, verse, go, in fact, let's go over there. We'll just take, I don't even think, uh, there's a couple of scriptures we're going to look at before we get to the first point. Go over to 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. Now, I know this is a familiar verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, and I'm just going to read it. It says, casting down imaginations. Our imaginations are amazing things, the things that we can think about, the things that we can just make believe that they're there when they may not even be there. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. What is it in your life and my life that is raising itself up and the things that we think about that are higher than knowing God on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, Paul says, cast those things down. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's an amazing thing. Every thought, every thought. So here's how we typically will go through our day. Well, maybe I'm driving and maybe you're, dri you're still working in your workplace. Maybe you're working at home, but you're going about your day and suddenly you catch yourself thinking about something that is affecting what you should be doing or what you'd like to do. And we are to take captive that thought, every thought, and bring it into the obedience of Jesus Christ. So what has captured your mind today? If how I spend my time is a measure of how much God and his truth impacts my life. What kind of measure would that be? We oftentimes will think, well, I went to church. I spent time in God's word today. But the question is this. How is it I'm spending my time? I'm spending my time. And so as we look at this captured mind, there's one other verse I want us to look at today before we get to the, the message. Go over to Romans chapter 8 for a minute. Romans chapter 8. And when you get there, Paul, as he writes these believers in Rome, he's going to contrast between life in the spirit and this life in the flesh with the carnal mind. But just jump down to verse 6 for a minute, Romans 8, verse 6. Eight, six. For to be carnally minded, he's going to just kind of settle it all down to this one principle. To be carnally minded, when I look at what is taking place in my life, in this world, in my family, in my workplace, in my whatever, to be carnally minded is, what's the next word? Death, death. Now, it may not be a physical death, although it can be that. If you go through this life carnally minded, never consider the truth of God and who Jesus is, your need for a savior, for you to be spiritually born again, you're going to find a second death forever being separated from God. But that's not God's intent. 
That's why Paul was in Athens that day preaching the gospel. He wanted those there that heard about this Jesus and the resurrection to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But to be carnally minded, it could be the death of hope, the, the death of peace, the death of joy, the death of, of desires, things that you want to do. To be carnally minded is death. But look at the next part of this. But to be spiritually minded, now catch this, is life and peace. People are looking for peace. They want meaning in life. Why am I here? And what is this all? I mean, if there is a God in heaven who's in control of all things, why is he allowed this? And if we're not spiritually minded, if God hasn't captured our heart, we're going to find we'll probably be carnally minded that will never lead to the things that our heart longs for and the things that God desires to do in us. So let's look at a few thoughts today. Am I carnally minded as I go about my routine and schedule, as I make decisions, or am I going to be spiritually minded? And that's the challenge for you and I today. So let's look at this first thought. If you'll go back to Acts chapter 17, look at verse 34 again. And that is the captured mind means begins with an openness. And here's what I mean. An openness to the truth of the word of God. Now, <clears throat> those that sat there on Mars Hill that day, those philosophers, the Epicureans and the Stoics, each day they would gather, they want to hear some new thing, they would debate and talk about those things. It was a mental exercise for them. As they, as they talked about whatever those things, the winds of doctrine that would blow through Athens that day, they would usually be centered around the false idols that were made with the hands of men that recognized different thoughts and philosophies and false gods. And so when Paul got there, he wanted them to hear truth and that truth to capture their minds. And I want you to take a look at verse 34 because it says, How be it certain men clave unto him. There were those there that day that heard the word of God, that truth captured their mind, and they wanted to know more. They, they were hungry for the truth, and people are hungry. But the question is, am I open to the truth? These people that day, there were some that were open to the preaching of the gospel. They were hungry and wanted more. <clears throat> Hold your place there for a minute and go back to the book of Psalm, Psalm 119. Psalm 119, and look at verses 18 and 19. If I were to ask you the question, we're going to read these two verses here, Psalm 119, 18 and 19, would this be your prayer? Listen to what the Bible says. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things, and then we find this, out of thy law. As we hear truth, and it captures our mind, they can be wondrous things. They can give us hope and joy and meaning and purpose. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. And here's the challenge I have for you today. Now, my wife, as I usually will sit, as pastor comes and preaches, she'll look over at me and she'll say, do you want one of these? And she'll give me a card because she knows that as I go through and I hear God's word go out, it helps me remember and process the truth that I've heard. And here's the challenge I have for you today. You may not have an index card. You may have a piece of paper. You may just have a phone that you're sitting with and you're, maybe you're looking at the scriptures on your phone. Here's the challenge. If God speaks to your heart today, write it down and remember it. And let someone else know about it. You know, we, there are there, there's that comment section on here. And you can just put that in there. Encourage our pastor today. I know some of you will go, amen. But the question is, is when God speaks to your heart today, let somebody know. Put a reference down there or a thought. And that's the challenge. We're going to come back to that thought in a minute. But do I have a desire to mature as I hear the truth of God? Something's going to capture my mind as I go about my day. And I'm up, you know what? There are days, just ask my wife. I will respond in the flesh. I will walk in the flesh. 
But by God's mercy and his grace, when he captures my mind with truth and I come to the realization, well, what benefit is this to my relationship with my wife? How is this going to have a positive impact in the life of my children or in my workplace? That attitude just stinks, Ken. You see, our, our, <clears throat> the way we live, our behaviors will be affected by what we think of our mind. So we see a desire to mature. If you go back here <clears throat> to uh, verse uh, Acts chapter 17 again, go back there with me. And I want you to look at this verse again. The Bible tells this. Howbeit certain men clave unto him. And then the next part we find is believed. You see, is your mind open to the word of God? It's not just enough to hear. We are to hear those things. But the question is, do I believe? And there were those that there that day that heard the word of God and that believed. Is my mind open to the truth of God? You see, just prior to Paul's visit to Athens. In fact, let's look there. We're in Acts chapter 17. Just go back to verse 11. He was in a place called Berea. And prior to that, he was in a place called Thessalonica. But look what he says about those people, those believers in Berea. Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Why, why would he say that? What would make them more noble? Well, the scripture tells us in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. You see, they were open to the truth of God, and when it captured their mind and heart, they believed on it. The scripture says, with all readiness of mind, and search the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Is my mind open to the truth? Do I have a readiness of mind? Do I have a mind captured by the truth of God's word? Carnally minded or spiritually minded? Or am I just bouncing back and forth? You see, God's desire is that we would be spiritually minded. Secondly, if you'll go back with me to Acts chapter 17, not only does it begin with an openness, but you'll see the captured mind proceeds with an obedience. Now, look what the scriptures say in verse 30, 34 again. Howbeit certain men cleaved to him, they heard the truth, the truth captured their mind, and then we find this next part, and believed. How precious is the word of God when we hear it and we obey it. <clears throat> it's not enough. We might be encouraged. We might go, yeah, that's good truth. But until I find myself by faith obeying what the word says, I'll never really see God at work the way he desires for me to see him at work. I'll never draw attention to him because I'll be focused on what life is throwing at me and the things that I don't have and the places I can't go and the people I can't be with. You see, how encouraging. And look at Proverbs 25. Let's just look at a scripture. And we'll see what Proverbs has, has to say about this. Psalms, Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 25, verse 12. You might think, well, that's kind of an interesting verse. But let's just look at it as a, as a principle. The Bible says this. As an earring of gold... and an ornament of fine gold. Now, those things have value. Now, and back, back in these days, if you go look prior to this verse, you'll find silver. Silver actually had more value than gold at that time, but they were things of value. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. There is not only wisdom, but value. And when you and I, when our minds are captured with truth and by faith, we're willing to step out in obedience. It'll bring value to us and it'll show, it'll give us wisdom. And the question is, is how will I respond? Well, let's go over to the book of James for a minute. Go to the, near the back of your Bible, Hebrews, James, James chapter one, James chapter one. You see, we all want the blessings of God. Man, I'd love to have God's blessing upon my life. Well, let's look and see what the truth says about receiving those blessings. In James chapter 1, if you go down to verse 22, the Bible says this, but be ye, what's the next word? Doers 
of the word and not hearers only. So I've got this contrast between, well, I can come and I can hear truth. I can acknowledge truth and go, man, that truth is awesome. But it's contrasted with not only just hearing, but actually doing, putting that truth into action by faith and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If all I do is come in here and acknowledge, it's deception because it's like I come walk up to a mirror and I go, well, looking pretty good today. You know, and I walk off, I go through my day and I forget until my wife draws to my attention that I've got this big honking burger hanging out of my nose and I realize I've just spent the last two hours in public or in a meeting talking with people and six foot away could see this thing. Not a good thing. Am I a hearer or a doer? Look what the Bible says. For if any be a hearer of the word and that and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, you see there's freedom in truth, is if we'll allow God to capture our mind, and continue therein. That's where the faith comes, being obedient to what God shows us today. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Here's the problem with disobedience. I'm just going to frame it that way. Sometimes you'll, pe you'll hear people say, you know, I, I just don't get anything out of God's word. You know, I was there in church all day. So would you, what did God speak to your, I, I don't know, I didn't get anything out of there. Well, whose problem is that? I know, let's blame the preacher. It's the preacher's fault. He was too loud, he was too quiet, he was too long, he was too short, he didn't have enough illustrations, he had too many illustrations. My mind was all over the place. The problem isn't with the preacher. The problem is with me. The problem is with me. And here's the challenge. The things that God has already spoke to me, if I could go back in my mind all through the years and just instantly God brought to my attention truth after truth after truth. And I said, you just take one of those and write that down. The last thing that you know of that God spoke to your heart of. Here's the question. Have I obeyed it? Could I write yes on this card? Yeah, I, God spoke to my heart. Here's where, here's where I was at in life, and he spoke to me. I obeyed it. Or maybe it's no. It was a thought. It was a truth. God brought conviction. But I left no different than the way I came because I didn't obey. You see, God's not going to show us things until we are ready to be obedient to the basic things he shows us. And then we wonder sometimes, how come God's not speaking to me? Maybe he is speaking to me and I'm just not obeying the very first thing he wants me to do. And maybe for you today, maybe it has to do with salvation. This isn't the first time you've heard about your need for a Savior, Jesus Christ. Your need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because you're spiritually lost and bankrupt. And maybe God wants to deal with your heart today right there. Believing on Jesus Christ. Maybe you're wondering, well, how come my, my mind is so focused on the, th the news of the world and the, the, the everything, and I'm just overwhelmed? Well, it might be where I'm spending my time. It may be that there's too much time in Facebook, Instagram, your news source, whatever it is. Turn the thing off. Turn the Facebook off. Get your face in the book. But the problem is disobedience. God isn't going to show you new truth until we're willing to obey the old truth that he showed us. When my boys were little and they were learning how to ride bikes, it was a funny time. I remember the first time I took Sam out to the elementary school, put him on a bike. He was ready to ride and roam free. And he started pedaling and off he was going and he started doing this big arcing turn. And I said, turn! No, turn more, son, turn more. And as he just gradually arced right into the wall inside of the school, stopped. 
But as he got better, he would listen. Those boys would listen about riding on the right side of the road and following the rules. Listen, if they, if they grew up and said, Dad, I'm not going to ride on the appropriate side of the road. I'm just going to Right down the middle looks pretty good. Do you think I'm ever going to turn them loose behind the wheel of my car? If I said, what's the last thing that God spoke to you? Did you say, yeah, I obeyed that? That's the question today. We want to, God to bless us, and we want to learn more things about God and encouraged about the things, but God isn't going to show us the specifics of his word and his will until we are willing to obey the basics. Go with me, if you would, over to Hebrews for a minute. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Now, I'm thankful for our preacher. I'm thankful for those who are more mature than I am when, when I'm faced with decisions, when I cry out to God and God has given us preachers and people in our life to help us, to point us to the scriptures. We're to follow their faith. But the question is, is am I maturing? The things that God has showed me, is, is it helping me to grow? Well, look at Hebrews 5 for a minute. We're going to see a contrast between milk and meat, between babes and those that are, we'll call them aged, not necessarily physical age, uh, but in the Lord. Look at verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So Ken, as, as I look at this, I ask myself this, am I just still feeding on the milk of God's word? Or maybe God says, listen, do you remember back at this basic truth and God brings it to your remembrance? Well, you know, some, that's too hard to obey for me. You know, that'd be great for a young person if they're starting out, but I've messed up too much. I don't know that I could even do that. Am I willing to obey with the simple truth God has shown me? Look at verse 14, but strong meat belonging to them that are full of age. Even those who by reason of use who can take the scriptures and those that truth that captures their mind and heart is used to discern between right and wrong, good and evil. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, God wants to see us obey his truth. Because he knows it's good for us. It brings recognition to him. It gives us hope and purpose and meaning. It's why, if I'm honest with you, this coronavirus thing, it's not really a big deal in my life. Oh, I, I am very concerned, if I'm honest, with the people that are my immediate family who may get the virus and get sick. But I, I have that same concern, whether it's the COVID virus or any other virus. But why is it? Because I can rest that there is a God in heaven. As, as crazy as life will get, and it will get crazy, our worlds will be turned upside down in the physical realm. We're all getting older. It will, our lives will be turned upside down in the emotional world, our mind, will, and emotions, and the spiritual realm. Our, it's just the natural course of life. And the question is, we can rest that there's a God in heaven who knows. And as, as painful as life can be, as difficult, as overwhelming as it can be, we can still rest there's a God in heaven. <clears throat> Have you obeyed the last message you heard? Look at James, Hebrews James 4. Hebrews, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth too good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We want to be close to God. We desire, well, the scriptures tell us, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's the issue, this carnal mind and the, the spiritual mind and living, trying to live in both worlds. Will I be obedient to the truth God shows me? If God reminds you of something today, 
that he's convicted you of in your past, that you said, God, I will, and you fill in the blank, but you never followed through and by God's grace and mercy obeyed that. Maybe that's where God's dealing with you today. Will I obey the last truth that God spoke to my heart? <clears throat> A captured mind begins, am I open to the truth of God? When God speaks to me through his word and it captures my mind, will I proceed with obedience? Will I be obedient to that truth? And then finally, we're going to look at this last thought this morning, and that is the captured mind will culminate in ownership. Go back with me to Acts chapter 17. For me, this is the, it's exciting when someone believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, but oftentimes we read through the scriptures and we just miss, go right over some exciting stuff. In this verse, verse 34, this is for me is the most exciting part. Now catch this. How be it certain men clave unto them and believed, among which was, there's a couple of names that are mentioned here, Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris. Now let me ask you this. Now in your top 10 of people out of the Bible, those are the two names that come to you. Who? Damaris? I, I, don't, I don't even know that I've heard that name before. You know, or this Dionysius, the area Opagite. You see, these two converts, when they heard the preaching of the gospel and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they were not household names of faith. What's interesting is the last phrase. Now catch this, which was Dionysius, the area Opagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Man, when I saw that, I'm like, what? You see, Dionysius and Damaris were open. They opened their minds to the truth. They obeyed the truth. And now they owned it in such a way that it affected, it affected others in their realm. And that's the amazing thing. You know what? A thousand years from now, is anybody going to know your name? Well, bring it up on the hologram. I'll just throw it up there there's up in the sky, right there in front of you, is a holographic image that looks three-dimensional and can move around and talk and speak. It's Stacy Warner. Oh, did you know? What, what can Stacy do? Spin that thing and suddenly a piano appears and you hear music. She's, you know, a thousand years from now, will anyone even know your name? These two names are unknown to us. But you see here, they took ownership of the truth they heard. They, but they obeyed that truth, and it so affected their mind and heart that they began to tell others about it, and others with them. What do I own today? You know, when, we make, when, when you ask that question, we oftentimes will go to the stuff that we have sitting in the garage, the house that's on a piece of property, maybe other things. That's not really the question here. The question is, is that this truth that has captured our mind and heart, what will I actually obey and own to the point that it changes how I live this life? That's the question. You see, so what is the process of, cha of a changed mind? Well, that's a good question. Let's see what the scriptures have to say. Go back to Joshua chapter uh, 1 for a minute. I want to go back to the Old Testament. Joshua Chapter 1. And I want you to see a couple of things here. You see, it's the Word of God that changes the mind. So the wrong thinking of the past is replaced by the right thinking, which affects the way that we live our, our life. Our minds are affected. They affect our manners. What matters? Now, in Joshua uh, chapter 1 in verse 8, look what the Bible has to say. It says this. The book of the law, here's how Joshua put it. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So here's the first question. What's in your mouth? Man, nasty taste, something that's flavorable. What are you chewing on? Depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What is it that you, that occupies your mind, that you think about day and night? 
You can tell by how you spend your time throughout the day and the things you do. That thou mayest observe to do. You see, there's that ownership part. The things that I think about, are they truth? And if they are truth, am I taking ownership of that truth? To do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. We want to see success. We want to see prosperity. But God's prosperity and success come from his truth from him as we live it out by faith. Shall make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You see, the process of a changed mind begins with what we think about. It does. You're having a bad hair day? I guarantee you, when I have a bad hair day, it's I've got a carnal mind, and I'm upset about something, and I've got everything figured out, and it's all about I. It has nothing to do with God and what God may be allowing in my life today. So we find here it culminates in an ownership and it's a process of a changed mind. You see, God, let's think of it this way. Have you ever heard this phrase? Maybe one of your children said something. We didn't, this was not a common phrase in our house, but I've heard it before. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. <laughs> well, maybe it needs to be our minds need to be washed out with the truth of God's word. I need a mind washing today. Y'all need a mind washing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Does God need to wash your brain out with soap? In the gospel of John, Jesus would say this in John 15, 3. He said, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It is the word of God that will clean our mind. When I use the phrase open-minded to the world, it means whatever comes in, if I agree with it, sounds good, that's what I'm going to follow. That's not what I'm talking about here. If, if you view your mind as a sacred place, that the only thing that comes in, comes in because you allowed it. That's a different thought. It's a different way of looking at things. Why don't we give God permission today to wash the wrong kind of thinking of the past and to saturate it with the truth of God? We know what we should do, and yet we struggle in doing it. Look at Psalm 119 again. Go back to the, the book of Psalm, Psalm 119, and let's look at a couple more verses as we wrap this up. Psalm 119 Go down to verse 11. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? Well, here's the principle. By taking heed, observing, being mindful of, take heed thereunto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. We need to take heed to the truth of God's word. Go with me, if you would, to the New Testament, to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. This is a principle that I love, <clears throat> that I learned many years ago. I wish I could say practice all the time, but it, is, it, will, it will be a principle that will help you in raising children. It will be a principle that will help take you from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. But look what Ephesians 4 verse 22 says, that she put off, concerning the former conversation. Listen, if you're a child of God, there's a way that you used to live, a way that you used to think before Jesus came into your heart, before you believed on the Lord Jesus. It's a way that people speak and think and live. Put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So we'll call it the old man, which is corrupt according to the de deceitful lust. You can't take the carnal mind the old man that is deceitful, it will always deceive and is corrupt. You can't clean it up. You can't take a dead, well, you can take a dead body. You can clean them up, clip their nails, do their hair, put them in a nice looking suit and put them in a coffin. But they're still dead. They're not going to come alive. And the old man is corrupted. Look at verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The principle is that when I find myself struggling and I catch the thought, it's the wrong thought, the wrong attitude, the wrong emotions, I've made the wrong decision, I need to bring my thoughts to the obedience of Christ. I need to say, God, I made the wrong choice. I said the wrong thing. I went to the wrong place. I am not in the right place. And I want to be where you are and with you. Will you forgive me? Will you help me? I need to put on, because if I don't put something on, it's not going to replace the old. It's not enough with, you know this with children, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that. You want to change a behavior? You can't. I used to tell my wife this as I'd come home, the principal comes home from work to the schoolhouse. You can't tame a tornado. You got a wrong attitude? Here's what you can do. Would you like to work on this? Or here's a shovel. Go outside and I want you to start digging a hole in the ground till it's about six feet deep. And here is the tape measure. What would you like to do? You, it's not enough to say, stop, don't. I can't, do, you know, because, until I'm willing to replace it. And that's the principle here to put on. And that's what, that's what I love about walking with Jesus Christ and knowing him and knowing God is because his heart's desire. He knows we're people of flesh. We scream at our kids or we, maybe we do it in our mind. We, go, we give up on them sometimes. Or maybe for you, it's not wrapped around your family. It might be the workplace or an investment. God knows what we are like, people of flesh. But we can put off and put on truth. And the question is, am I putting on truth? It's the word of God that is quick and powerful. It's the word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's that word that will discern and cut every layer. Your spiritual, your flesh, your mental part, and it will cut and divide asunder and show you and allow you to discern the intent of the heart. I'm all messed up today. My, my. Well, maybe I need to saturate my mind with the truth that God has showed me and be reminded of who I am in Christ. So we see here the process of a changed mind, and then we'll wrap this up with this. Go with me if you... Uh, if you would, to Matthew. Sometimes, I don't know why people tend to do this, but we do. We put church in a box, went to church today, watched it online today. Oh, God spoke to me and I responded online to the message, wrote it down. Sometimes in our minds we take the very act of truth that God shows us and we disconnect it from the very breath of the one who's behind those words. And that's where God wants us to be. If all we do is come to church and we hear a message that, that brings conviction or encourages us of, and it, it brings the thought, well, I need to do more or I need to stop doing that. We miss the whole point of what it means to come into the presence of God and worship him. If we're not coming into his presence and conviction will come the closer we get to him. And we, if we don't draw attention to him of who he is and what he's doing and how he's changed us, we'll miss out on the worship part. And that's what I love about Matthew chapter 11. It always grounds me in the chaos of the day, in the chaos of my mind. And it reminds me of the truth. Go to Matthew 11 and let's just close with these final thoughts. These last three verses, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Jesus, he speaks these words, and maybe he needs to remind you of where you're at today. Come unto me, and I love that verse. Come unto me. In my chaos, in my mess ups, in my failures, in my loss of hope, in my pity of just myself, I need to remember those words as Jesus speaks, come unto me, come unto me. It's the person behind the words that's the important part. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Listen, do you know what it's like to labor? Oh, I'm, let me just share what a wimpy guy I am. 
I decided to rake the lawn the other day. Grabbed a lawn rake, put gloves on, ended up with a blister here, a blister here, and a blister here. This blister ripped open, and I'm just, oh, my hands hurt. So I got up this morning, my whole body hurt from the little labor of raking. How wimpy is that? Are you heavy laden? You laboring? Maybe it's with this whole virus thing. Maybe you're not working. Maybe you can't visit your family. You're miles away or close, and, and for whatever reason. Come unto me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Isn't that what we long for in the chaos of life? And learn of me, Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Our, our mind, our will, and our emotions, the things that we struggle with most things about. Jesus says, come unto me. Yoke up with me, and I will give you rest. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So here's the question. What's captured your mind? Am I yoked up with Jesus today? Or what am I yoking up with? I want rest. Will I heed those words of Jesus, come unto me? Come unto me. He knows where you're at. He knows what, what goes through our minds and hearts, the things that concern us. Well, let me put it this way. The things that overwhelm us, the things that are out of control, the things we can't really change, Jesus would just say, come unto me. Yoke up with me. Learn from me. And I will give you rest. Rest for your soul. So what's on your mind today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. And Lord, you may have brought conviction in this short time that we've spent around your word. You may have reminded people of truth in their past that was never obeyed. Lord, wherever you've worked today, may the name of Jesus just be lifted up to the point that we would come unto him. For some today, it may be salvation. That's where they're at. They need to obey and by faith believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For some of us, it may be the things that we struggled with this morning or the things, the decisions we have to face later today or tomorrow. Will we just simply come unto you, Jesus, and yoke up with you and trust, trust you as we walk with you where you are that you will do what is best for us in a way that will bring attention to you and honor you and glorify you. Father, thank you for this time, and I pray that as we continue to worship you in the next hours, our preacher comes, and I'm excited about the word that God has for us today. Lord, would you just give him liberty to proclaim your truth, and may your spirit work through your word, and Jesus, would you just be lifted up and honored and glorified. Thank you for this time. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've reminded us of. May we be obedient and walk by grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you for joining us online.